Hi there paint shoppers, welcome to my site and welcome to this video tutorial. This tutorial is going to demonstrate how to make one of these things. It is a 3D cube. I found the original instructions for this on Pinterest and I thought, I wonder if I can do that with the paint shop and played with it a bit and sure enough you can. And this is the end result. Now it's an optical illusion in a 3D cube, a 3D, a 3D cube. So when I look at it right now, what I see is a little cube here and this is the left wall, this is the right wall, this is the floor, and this is tucked right nicely into that corner. If I look at it, if I twist my head the other way, then I see a big cube with this cube cut out. And if I look at it a different way, I can see a big cube with a little cube kind of sitting in on top of one corner. So it's, it's really interesting. Um, if you want to see it moving around, you can just do this and uh, then it'll change the orientation, probably change the look. So what you do is you take a look and you play with it and uh, optical illusions are fun. And you can do, I can do whatever you want with this thing once you're done. Uh, make, you can actually join many of them together and have a nice little pattern. Okay, so it's really quite easy to do and it's kind of fun. And uh, we're going to do it with vectors. I suspect you could probably hand draw this thing if you have a steady hand and like to do that kind of stuff. But it's a vector based thing when I do it and uh, vectors means that you can make it bigger make it smaller and it's not going to be all raggedy and jaggedy. Let's get going on it then and we go to file new and we've got a 3000 by 3000 pixel document with a white background and OK. And there we are. Now there's things to do to set this up correctly. First of all it's a 3000 by 3000 so I, I want to have guides on it because the guides uh, let you be very precise when you're moving things around. So I'm going to go to the view menu. I'm going to make sure that guides are set, that snap to guides are is set, and that the rulers are showing. And you'll notice my rulers are maybe a bit different from yours. Mine are not the black rulers with that awful gray printing like here. Mine are white rulers with black printing, so I can actually see them. So to set a guide on Paint Shop Pro, you just come into the ruler like this, left click or just tap your pen down and drag it out because it's a 3000 pixel wide document I'm going to go to 1500 so I get right in the middle more or less and I'm going to come up to the top here and drag down to about the same thing about 1500 pixels and there's the center of the page okay so that's the setup now what we're going to use to do this is the symmetric shape tool click on that and you've got these options up here. Polygons or the stellated. I have no idea what stellated means, but it sounds really cool. Uh, we're not going to use it. We're going to use the polygon tool. And we're going to set it to six sides. Uh, the line style is just an ordinary straight line style. You've got all these other line styles here. You could do a barbed wire one. That would be kind of cool. Uh, no, we'll stick there. And I'm making it a width of six pixels. Uh, when we do the drawing, when we make our polygons, we want the outline to be black and we don't want any background color. So uh, this is the background color within a vector object. So we don't want it to be white, we want it to be transparent. So to make it transparent, when a vector tool is uh, selected, you just click this little thing here and the color goes away. So that little circle with a line means no whatever. In this case, no white, no background color. Okay, so let's get started with this guy. And now we've got this selected. Everything's cool up here. So we're just going to make a polygon. Nice polygon. We've got to accept the polygon. And we get our pick tool here. We pick this up here. Move it over and it snaps into place right there. And you can see the guides are going perfectly right through it. And we'll go back here right through here and right through here. Nice. The, the guides are there. So we're going to make a second one now and I'm going to make a new vector layer just to make sure I don't have any silliness going on and it's going to drop down below but it's new vector layer I'm adding and OK and I'm going to do it on that on that one here so we still got the white foreground or the black foreground the white background or the transparent make a second one. There we go and accept that, grab the pick, 
pick this up and drag it over and it snaps into place okay yeah I'm just gonna choose that so that's two nice looking little polygons they're looking pretty good now I'm gonna zoom in on them and we're gonna start doing some other stuff now now we've got these beautiful uh, uh, guides here and I'm gonna add some more because when you add the guides things snap to the guides so I want to make sure they're very precise and right in the right position so I'm gonna drag one down to this corner here and it should be exactly right over there I'm gonna drag one down to this corner right here I'm gonna drag another one down to here and the last one I'm going to bring it down to um, here okay good now we're gonna start joining lines and the way we make this thing look like two uh, uh, boxy things is you start one place you miss one you do another one you miss one you do another one okay and you're gonna use the pen tool for this there's the pen tool right there and it's going to be on this one draw lines and polylines and again we've got black and uh, transparent so I'm going to start right here click and drag you see it's snapping right onto that guide let go of it accept it if you don't accept it then when you go up here it'll draw a line from there to there and then you know it, then you're going backwards and trying to fix it okay the second one is going to be from here down to here there except that and we're gonna have to move this down a little bit there we go from here up to there and this follows the guide along perfectly there we go and accept that so that's our big uh, big big thing done the big one done the big polygons done now for the inside box this one in here we're gonna go every other one starting here here and here and they're all going to meet in the middle so let's do this first one and right, come down here to the middle and accept it go from this one to the middle see it wants to get there accept it and you can see it coming together here can't you and accept it now I'm going to take away the view, view the guides, and we'll zoom out a bit. And voila, look at that. And we've got our 3D cube. Now, if you want to color it, like this, this other one I had is colored, right there. Coloring it is, uh, is, is kind of fun as well. Um, you can just leave it like this, or you can do anything you want. Okay, so that's what we're going to do next. Okay, so this is uh, how to color the thing. Now this is what we've got now. We've got two layers, vector 2 and vector 1. That's vector 2. That's vector 1. And uh, we want to select it in a way that makes it easy to color it. So the best way to do that is to go to selection. Oh no, the first thing you got to do is, is drop these two together. Okay, uh, merge, merge down. Now we're going to go to selections from vector object. Go. Okay. Now we got marching ants. Now I'm going to use this color and maybe this one and maybe this one as my three colors. What I want to do is I want to add a texture to it as well. So this is how you do that. And uh, again, this is different from the way it does it in X6, and I hope I get it right. Okay, so I've got an add texture, and I've got gravel. It doesn't matter which one you use. You can use any of them. It can be uh, really wild like this, or you can be very subtle. I'm going to use wild because I want to make sure it works. And we'll go up here. I think we'll do the gravel again. It was kind of a cool one. Okay, gravel. Okay, so I've got add a texture, and okay, and I've got that color. So I'm going to go up here to the top, and there we go. Look at that. It did it. And I'm going to come to this one here, which is the next opposite to that one. 
and I'm going to go and get a different color now. This one here. And there, I'm going to make sure that the texture is still adding. See, in 6, it would stay until you turned it off. On an X8, it seems to just, every time you use it, uh, if you change color, it, it changes there, it turns the texture off. So we still got gravel there. And we're going to go here and here. And uh, we're going to choose the last color will be this one here. Back to the textures. Add texture. I don't know why they did that. It was good the way it was before. And we'll put it here. And we'll put it here. And there we go. Look at that. So it's a 3D cube with uh, all the textures in it. If you don't want the textures, you don't add them. Uh, it's really it's, it's up to you. And you can use any colors you want. Um, we could use the oranges instead if we wanted to. Uh, there's there. Oh, it's still got a bit of the texture showing. Whoops, I did the wrong one, didn't I? Yeah, like I know what I'm doing. There. And we'll go here. And we'll do it there and there. See how quickly you can do this, huh? And we'll choose that strange color. And we'll do it here and here. There we go. So have fun with it. It really is a kind of a neat little thing. And uh, uh, just uh, endless possibilities with a 3D cube. And it's just fun to make, too. Okay? So thanks for watching. I do appreciate your time. I hope you got something out of it, and I hope you enjoyed it. And we'll see you on the next video. Take care. Bye now.